welcome back to the Amateur Radio Technician License Course. This is Lesson 3, Part 2. It's a wonderful day to learn, so let's get started. I'm your instructor, Gary Stevens, KE2GS. In this lesson, we're going to talk about propagation modes, which are line of sight, sporadic E, meteor scatter, aurora scatter, reflections, tropospheric ducting, F layer skip, and radio horizon. Some portions of the radio wave spectrum behave differently in the ionosphere. While HF signals are reflected back to Earth, VHF and UHF pass right through. For this reason, the higher portions of the UHF band are preferred for communications with satellites in orbit and probes sent to uh, uh, outer space by space agencies. For the examination, know that direct UHF signals are rarely heard from stations outside your local coverage area because UHF signals are usually not reflected by the ionosphere. By using HF bands, we can exploit the refraction of the ionosphere to more consistently make long-distance communications. For the exam, know that the advantage of HF over VHF in higher frequencies is that long-distance ionospheric propagation is far more common on HF. The further south you live, the less likely you will ever be able to observe the auroral reflection on VHF. However, you will need to know that one characteristic of VHF signals received via auroral reflection is the signals exhibit rapid fluctuations of strength and often sound distorted. The sporadic E layers form due to ionized gases creating a thin cloud formation. While it doesn't help much for long distance, it does extend the over horizon signals for 28 uh, megahertz and above. Uh, you are responsible for knowing that sporadic E is a propagation type that is mostly commonly associated with occasional strong over-the-horizon signals on the 10, 6, and 2 meter bands. One way radio signals overcome obstructions is a phenomena called knife edge diffraction. When a radio signal encounters something like the sharp edge of a building, the effect is that a portion of the radiation is redirected. You should remember that knife edge diffraction effects might cause radio signals to be heard despite obstructions between the transmitting and receiving stations. I have to admit that I'm a bit of a space nerd. You can see in this uh, photo the Space Shuttle Endeavour is silhouetted uh, against the uh, atmosphere. Now the darkest portion uh, to the right is uh, the ionosphere, uh, below that's the uh, mesosphere, uh, below that is the stratosphere, and the orange portion is the uh, troposphere. We will talk about tropospheric uh, ducting in a, another slide, uh, but for this uh, particular question you need to know tropospheric ducting is responsible for allowing over-the-horizon VHF and UHF communications to ranges of approximately 300 miles on a regular basis. We can't see every meteor that enters the atmosphere, but they occur multiple times per second. Entering the Earth's atmosphere, they superheat, creating an ion trail. This ion trail can be exploited for long-distance communications. For the test, you should know that 6 meter band is best suited for communicating via meteor scatter. Atmospheric ducting is caused by a thermal inversion. This occurs when a warm air mass is trapped between two cold air masses. Thermal inversions typically create fog. The duct that is created can facilitate VHF and UHF signals to travel 300 miles or more. For the exam, understand that temperature inversions in the atmosphere cause tropospheric ducting. During the day, there are two F layers. They are F1 and F2. At night, they merge into just one F layer. During the transition of these layers, coupled with the high solar activity, is the prime time for long-distance 10-meter communications. This is known as a band opening. For the exam, know that from dawn to shortly after sunset, during periods of high sunspot activity, is generally the best time for long-distance 10-meter band propagation via the F-layer. 
Both the 6 meter and 10 meter bands are highly reliant on solar activity in order to facilitate long distance contacts. The exam requires you to know that the 6 or 10 meter bands may provide long distance communications during the peak of the uh, sunspot cycle. It's easy to visualize line of sight communication, but over the horizon uh, communications requir requires a bit more imagination. The radio horizon is a point where the line of sight ends. Uh, radio waves travel beyond the radio horizon due to refraction or atmospheric bending. For the exam, remember that VHF and UHF radio signals usually travel somewhat further than the visual line of sight distance between two stations because the Earth seems less curved to radio waves than to light. Thanks for watching and I hope you're enjoying this series. If you like it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Feel free to leave comments and suggestions below. Well, until next time, never stop learning. Mm -hmm.